Stephen Armstrong, the senator you should not fuck around with. Bonnie Valentine, the president whose actions and heart are utterly unclouded. To be entirely honest, I have no idea about holding a monarchy. But I do know that these patriotic politicians will do anything to make their dreams of a great America become reality. And I mean anything. I am Grandmaster B of the Council of Fans, and it is our job to find out who would win in a versus show. Are you also sick of those spineless bureaucrats? Those lazy politicians that follow laws without giving a second thought? Very fortunate that Texas had one arm strong for carrying out the task of shutting all that bad shit insane shit down. Steven Armstrong! Steven's life at first didn't seem at all as one that would lead to the political path. While in college, Steven was an absolute pro in football and could have easily made a successful career with that. However, his inner patriotism could not be silenced. Thus, he joined the Navy and eventually would return to Colorado to run for the title of Senator with the goal of cutting the state's budget. Well, Colorado here was a little different, as it was occupied by the private military company World Marshal Inc. And Armstrong's changes would make the company take over the police force. And by the way, World Marshal were covering civilian executions as crossfire casualties. Of course, reality can be cruelly disappointing. People aren't interested in what you say, rather on how on what spin you put it, as all comes down to money. And thanks to scripted speeches, he won the senator title. And for Armstrong's American dream, it was all part of his plan. America is rotten to its core. That's why we have to pull from the roots and restart all over, using war as a business to end war as a business. Creating an era where people will fight for what they believe, where strength ultimately determines who will prevail. So he had to keep pushing. Like uh, turning children of the streets into superhumans. And become the 45th president of the United States, where chances were looking anything but badly. And though he's very scheming and patriotic, of course, he still has one more thing that makes him uncomparable to other presidents. The nanomachines, son. And these physics-denying babies rock. The 10th Ben of our console, Benedict, has upgraded himself with these and... I want now some too. Fuck it! He ordered two loads on Multiverse Enterprise! Gonna steal the one that's left. These nanoscopic babies run through Stephen's entire body. They harden when confronted with physical trauma, with the side effect of turning the affected eras black. Turning the senator to one you don't want to fuck with. They grant him absolute bonkers abilities. Superhuman strength, speed and durability. He can lift multiple tons and can take hits just as strong. In fact, he has a nanite relocation ability to heal all damage done to his physiology and even to fully reattach severed body parts. He can punch the ground so it snatches and magma spills out, and he has energy manipulation, which allows him to absorb and store energy in his body, as well as other vehicles. Plus, he can even make them levitate. Nice. When blocking attacks, the nanomachines permit Armstrong to unleash even more powerful counters. And finally, he can activate the nanomachines a second time to increase their effects on his physicality even further. Now imagine a dude like him as your interviewer for a job. That's right, when Jetstream Jesus, Sam, sorry, applied for a place of work, he was tested by a literal battle against a senator. Fortunately, winning wasn't compulsory, better surviving. Unfortunately for Sam, maybe he shouldn't have taken that job in the first place. All of Armstrong's plan might have worked if it wasn't for one independent freedom fighter with no weakness for Armstrong's charisma, Raiden. And when Raiden fought Armstrong at last, holy rules of nature, it was intense. With his high frequency blade, Raiden can casually cut through metal gears that are made of carbon nanotubes, meaning he can casually dish out kinetic energies akin to 100 kilotons. But more impressively, he defeated Monsoon, who tossed an APC so fast that raindrops seemed to be frozen. A feat like this would come out to 66 megatons. That's like 2,600 times the Nagasaki bomb. And Armstrong certainly upscales this. What's also insane is that that exact APC was caught clean by Raiden, making him already around 12% light speed. But he can even go faster when you consider that Raiden scales above Snake, who avoided a laser ray. Putting Raiden's boost into this number, this means Raiden can be in base as fast as 72% the speed of light. And Armstrong clearly matches that. 
Too bad for Armstrong that Raiden wasn't Raiden anymore, but Jack the Ripper, and thus had the speed and the more powerful weapon, the Murasama, to put this senator down by crushing his heart. However, just his physical heart, as instead of being angry that his plans got ruined and, well, his life, Armstrong acknowledged that his dream didn't die at all, as he could leave one worthy successor, not a pawn who fights for causes he doesn't even understand, but someone who doesn't let legal bullshit get in the way from fighting for what he believes, Raiden himself. Because maybe, just maybe, they are, deep inside, kindred spirits. Alright, I think we're about done here. Patriotism. A term that means much more than fighting for your country, but fighting for your family. This is exactly what young Funny learned the hard way. Funny's father was a soldier who had hardly time for his family due to his cause of duty. One day he got captured by the enemy and was tortured to spit out information about his company. However, despite having glimmers of weakness, his handkerchief with his son's birthday soon on it reminded him for what he's doing all of that, and thus let him stand to the bitter end. In fact, it was so important that he hid it in his eye socket. Jesus. Unfortunately, Funny's father passed away. When Funny received the information alongside the handkerchief from a colleague of his father, Captain Valentine, it certainly devastated him, but it did show him the importance of patriotism. So when Funny Valentine, cause Captain Valentine married his mom, grew up, he has known exactly what path he wants to walk. And so he joined the army. However, it has been rough. Yeah, Funny got captured by the enemy and got unsurprisingly tortured, which subsequently led to his lacerations on his back that resemble the American flag. Valentine's company perished as they entered a so-called Devil's Palm, a supernatural phenomenon. Unable to find their way, the entire company passed away, except Valentine, who encountered a very mysterious heart which fused with his body to moreover grant him a supernatural gift. An astral projection of him, a stand, appeared to be stunned dirt cheap. cheap. Now, like most stands, the close range stand D4C is completely invincible and invisible to non stand users. You would need to kill the host directly to kill the stand, but it works the other way around as well. However, this is just a base blessing nearly every stand owns. D4C comes with an absolute insane ability, the Dimension Hop. And even for Jojo, this is bizarre. When Valentine is situated between two objects, D4C allows its user to pass into parallel worlds at will and pull people or items from them back into his world. And now very fascinating and terrifying, if the same objects of two universes collide, they merge into each other, causing them to explode on a molecular level. This somewhat obviously guarantees instant death, except for Valentine himself, since he's immune to that kind of shit. Thanks to that immunity, when being injured, Funny can enter other bodies himself, alongside D4C to be fully healthy. In fact, he can drag other Funnies into his dimension to outnumber his opponent. However, they don't wield D4C, since D4C is exclusive to this very universe. Now, I don't think it's surprising that having such a privilege would put you at a huge advantage in this world, particularly when you're standing marvelous in political prowess and performing convincing speeches. Likely due to his navy services too, Valentine became the 23rd president of the United States with whopping 91% approval ratings. Excellent for the execution of his dream to make America having the biggest happy life index in the world. Though at a cost of having every other country suffer. Well, in order to make this happen, he had to collect, uh, Jesus' corpse? Yes. It was spread across America. Fortunately for Funny, he already got the heart, uh, literally, but there were still eight pieces remaining. The eyes, the left arm, the right arm, the legs, the ears, the ribcage, the skull, and the spine. They certainly harnessed immense power. For example, the spine alone was able to create a heavy storm over Kansas. Doing so could require 5 million tons of TNT. So of course it's a no-go for the president to not own them all. But finding them all can be very difficult. So he orchestrated a horse race, the Steel Ball Run in order to have talent and jockeys all over the world to collect them incidentally. However, despite all his prosperity, he couldn't get through an unlikely duo, Jairo Zappelli and Johnny Joestar, who got their grasp on two of those parts. 
But with allies and the brokenness of D4C, even those two weed-smoking sons of bitches aren't unbeatable, even if Johnny's nail bullets can move <laughs> over 7 million meters per minute. Thus, it was only a matter of time when Valentine got him all, killing Jaira and absorbing a 14-year-old girl, which he raped by the way, where no red flags but American ones for this president. As every casualty in this war is necessary sacrifice for the greater good. When all was done, Funny Valentine finally stands with the goddess Fortuna herself. Finally he's free of misfortune, and eventually the whole city of America is as well. All thanks to Love 3! A little tricky to describe, it basically turns Valentine two-dimensional, hiding him within a pocket dimension. While that, a wall of light follows him around and redirects any misfortune afflicted on him elsewhere. For example, when no wheelchair Johnny shot his nail bullets at him, they were transferred to a Parisian construction site in which they destroyed the scaffolding and thus killed several construction workers. As long as Funny doesn't build up too much distance to Lucy Steele, the miner, he's basically impossible to kill. In the end, there was only one thing that could put an end to this. Johnny's physics-breaking nail bullets infinite rotation, which basically basically breaks space itself. But even when laying on Dev's bed, he senses hope in Johnny for not seeing things from just one perspective. Owing to bring Chira back as well as that his heart and actions are utterly unclouded, he might have gotten away. However, despite having the ability to pass through dimensions, he couldn't pass Johnny's one test which would reveal his true face, making this president to have taken the first napkin for his coffin. <laughs> Alright, the results are in. Let's put an end to this debate once and for all. It's time for a versus show. God bless America. Your indeed showed up, Mr. President. Mr. Senator, as it will remain, your survival of the fittest philosophy sickens me, and I vow on my diseased father's handkerchief, as long as I draw breath, you won't become president. <laughs> then I don't see a problem. You piece of shit! Someone's past. That's what you expect from the people. Everyone should carve their own path. You worthless virgins. Dead drunk was in college. So, what do you say? Down, set, us! Awesome. You foresee the work? 
there's only one way now. The God is of one God is now with us. And soon with the entirety of America as well. Except with you, you my bastard. Say service for the people. <laughs> I guess Armstrong took beating the competition a bit too literal. This fight was whack, like having a president who falls asleep with eyes open. Valentine's absolute insane hacks seem to ensure a victory very clearly. But unfortunately for the Steel Ball Run orchestrator, the nanomachines are just really, really broken. Basically, nearly anything G4C throws at them, the nanomachines could respond. Money can drag multiple other versions of himself into the fight, but they are all basically useless. At least nothing that can't be worked around with one magma eruption. Honey could drag another Armstrong into the fight and, say, kill him right away, but as insane as it is, the nanomachines would likely resist that, giving how they operate on a molecular level, kinda what the fusion does. And D4C's level of power just isn't enough to kill Steven directly. Valentine's best level of power comes from that Kansas storm. Assuming each corpse part can do that, that means Funny's level of power reaches 45 megatons. Armstrong's best is at least 65 megatons. But unlike Valentine, Armstrong is actually as tough as his attack potency can dish out. There is no way Valentine himself would be able to survive something similar to a, a SAR bomb. But sure, it shouldn't matter if D4C tanks all the hits since stands can't be harmed by non-stand users no matter what. Well, that would require D4C to be fast enough to do so, and given that Armstrong is over 2000 times faster, I don't see that happening. That's also why Funny couldn't drag this Armstrong to another universe, cause he's too slow. The only hope Valentine still has is Loft Train. But unfortunately, it can't really help to win the fight. Valentine basically can't really use Fisticus, as he would need to leave the barrier. And the misfortune would be redirected elsewhere anyway. So at best, Love Train would only hesitate the fight to a stalemate. If it weren't for the fact that Metal Gear is fucking crazy. Raiden's high frequency blades, essentially a quantum wall that warps things on its scale to sever them apart. And Armstrong was able to snap that shit easily. Heck, Armstrong was literally stated to have broke modern physics with that. This would likely allow him to break through Love Train and rip the president in half. And that was funny. The winner is Stephen Armstrong. <laughs>